Here's a print before calibrating and here's a print after calibrating. Now, normally your bamboo machine will do a pretty good job at printing things without too many problems. However, if you're noticing issues on your print, then it may be time to calibrate. These issues can be caused by a few things, so make sure you check out the calibration page to see if any of them relate to you. The two calibrations we're going to be doing are the flow dynamics calibration and the flow rate test. You can find the flow dynamics K factor in the device tab, you can find the flow ratio in the filament profile. Why these aren't neatly placed together like in Orca Slicer is beyond me. But alas, I guess one of the main directives of a 3D printing company is to frustrate its users somewhat. Now these calibrations can be a little bit confusing as to exactly what they do. So I'm going to try my best to explain it by using a tube of toothpaste. Let's start with flow dynamics, and imagine the opening of the toothpaste tube is the nozzle. When you first squeeze, there is a slight delay before anything actually comes out, and when you stop, there's a slight delay until it actually stops. So the flow dynamics calibration teaches your printer how much to kind of pre-squeeze or ease off, so you don't get blobs, gaps or weird edges, especially on corners and detailed parts. Then there's the flow rate calibration, which is about getting the amount just right. Squeeze too hard, you get a glob. Not enough, and barely anything comes out. Squeeze just right, perfect line every time. The flow rate calibration makes sure that your printer knows exactly how hard to squeeze the tube, so your prints have accurate walls, solid layers, and a clean finish. Now, if you never want to have to worry about calibrating anything, then today's sponsor, PCBWay, takes care of all of this for you. They have an army of commercial grade 3D printers that can print a huge variety of materials from PLA and resin all the way up to steel. They'll handle all the precision for you. No need to dial in the flow rate or K factors. Just upload your files and you'll get a quote straight away. I got them to make me some door hinges for my P1S a few months ago and they're still going strong to this day. Use the link below to get a discount off your next order. And now it's time to calibrate. The first thing we need to do is prepare our filament profile. If you're using a default or generic built-in profile, you can skip this step. But for those of us who have made our own, we will need to make a custom filament so Bamboo Studio can see it in the coming steps. Create new, select your vendor, type, and what variation it is. Then click copy current filament preset, which basically copies your known working preset in its entirety and allows Bamboo Studio to interact with it properly. Now select the printers you want to put it onto, select preset, then hit create. Now we can move to the calibration tab. If you have an X or A series printer, you'll also see an automatic calibration option. However, these automatic tests can sometimes be inaccurate, so I'd recommend doing it manually for the best results. If you have multiple printers that are all exactly the same, meaning they all have exactly the same hardware, then you should only need to do these tests once on one machine per filament type. And these calibration results should work perfectly with your other printers. And I know this because I have tested the same filament on all of my machines, and the results have all pretty much came out the same. We're going to start with flow dynamics by clicking manual calibration. Select your nozzle size, plate type, and filament. The filament you use has to come from a filament type that is listed in your custom filaments window or any of the system presets that came with the slicer. Then choose line and adjust the value step to 0.001 for the most precise result. Then hit calibrate and wait for the print to finish. Now you'll see a bunch of lines next to a bunch of numbers. The aim is to find the line that is the most consistent without any over or under extrusion. And if you're a perfectionist, this can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. <laughs> but from this test, it looks as though this line looks the best. So our K factor is now 0.033, which we will now be assigning to the filament we chose in the earlier step. So when we move over to the device tab, we click the filament box, find our material we used for the calibration, and choose the new PA profile we've just made. If you ever need to change the K factor for any reason, you can go into Manage Result and Edit, Delete, or just make an entirely new setting. Now it's time to calibrate the flow rate. Choose Complete Calibration, your nozzle diameter, plate type, and the same filament you used in the previous test. Then click Calibrate. 
The printer will now print off a few rectangles with numbers above them. Once they're finished, inspect them closely for the rectangle with the nicest surface. You can try rubbing them with your finger to see how rough they are, or even to see if a genie will appear and grant you three wishes. I just find it easier to inspect them visually as sometimes a lot of them can feel very similar. Once you've chosen one, select the number on the calibration screen and now you have your flow rate for the filament. You can do an additional calibration if you like, but I find that the initial one is good enough. You can either save the flow rate to a new filament or make note of the number and add it manually into your pre-existing filament preset. And now your flow dynamics and rate have been set, this filament is good to go. Now technically you should do this with all of your filament including all of the variations of colour. <laughs> But from my experience, if I have multiple colors all from exactly the same brand, if I just calibrate one color, these calibration settings seem to do a good job with the rest. But this really comes down to the consistency of the brand you're using. So I just run some tests yourself on your filament to see if the colors that are all from the same brand are bringing back similar results. But if you're trying out a new brand of filament for the first time, or the outside finish is super important for your print, then it may be worth doing these calibrations. Because once they're done, you probably don't have to do them again for a while. At least until you change the hardware or you start noticing issues with the print. Hope this video has helped. Thanks for watching.